everyone. I'm going to talk about combinatorial games and multi-type Galton Watson trees. Uh, so, what are multi-type Galton Watson trees? So we know what Galton Watson branching processes are. In the case of multi-type Galton Watson trees, we have a given finite set of colors. So, in in the for the sake of this talk, I'm just going to focus on the case where you have two colors, blue and red, and then the root phi is assigned blue with probability p sub b and red with probability p sub r, which is 1 minus p sub b. Now, each vertex, just as in the case of Galton Watson trees, gives birth to offspring independent of everything else. In this case, it, this offspring distribution will depend only on the color of the parent vertex. So, for example, uh, when you are given that v is a blue vertex, then v is going to have m blue children and n red children according to some bivariate probability distribution chi sub b and chi sub b of m comma n and similarly when v is red uh, conditioning conditioning on v being red uh, its offspring distribution is given by chi sub r okay uh, so the resultant tree that you're going to get is basically a color tree and uh, we are going to talk about directed graphs so uh, for this tree, if u is a parent to u is the parent to v, then the edge u v is directed from u towards v. Uh, so we will have two types of edges. The type one edges are those where the parent and the child are both of the same color, and type two are those where the parent and the child differ in their colors. So in each game that I'm going to talk about, so I'm going to talk about basically just one game, but I'll mention two others that I'm studying. Uh, there are two players. And there is a single token, and the idea is basically that the players will take turns to move the token from one vertex to another, and this will be along directed edges. One player is going to be allowed uh, to move the token along uh, only type 1 edges. So those will be the permissible edges for that player. So um, the, the permissible edges for one player will be type 1 edges, and the permissible edges for the other player are going to be, are going to be type 2 edges. Uh, so the games that I talk about, so usually the combinatorial games that we talk about, uh, you fix a realization of the random tree. This capital T is a realization of the random tree skip, script T. And the token is placed at any given vertex of this capital T. Uh, usually the root, but you know, can be any other vertex inside the tree. And capital T is known to both the players. Okay, So the, these are full information games, so the players know the structure of the entire tree. Um, also, uh, we assume that uh, the players play optimally, which means that uh, whichever player is going to win tries to win the game as quickly as possible, and whichever player is going to lose tries to prolong the game as much as possible. So the, the, the game that I focus on for the sake of this talk is basically normal game. So you have two players, P1 and P2. Permissible edges for P1 are of type 1, and per permissible edges for P2 are of type 2. Uh, and, you know, again, they take turns to move the token. Uh, the rule for winning is that whoever fails to move the token first loses. Uh, the other person wins. So there is a possibility of draw here that the game can continue forever, in which case neither person wins. Uh, there are two other games that I have studied in this ongoing work. Misery games are where the rule for winning is flipped, which means that whoever fails to move the token wins. Um, and escape games are a different kind of games where you have two players, stopper and escaper, and uh, stopper wins when either of the two players fails to make a move. And in escape games, there is no possibility of draw. Okay, um, for normal games, um, we have to start with uh, the definition of some subsets. So I've tried to use notations that are pretty suggestive. N here stands for normal. Uh, w will refer to winning and L will refer to losing. Now, what do these subscripts mean? So B, of course, refers to the color of the vertex at which the token is being placed at the beginning of the game. One indicates that it is the first player, P1, who is making the first move uh, or you know playing the first round of the game. And so NW1B basically refers to uh, that subset of blue vertices, V, such that if the token is placed at V at the beginning of the game and P1 plays the first round, then P1 wins. So this winning is in terms of whichever player is playing the first round of the game. Okay, similarly here when you look at losing, it's in terms of 
the player who's making the first move. Okay, so likewise, we can define the subsets NW2B, NW1R, and NW2R. So just to illustrate, what is NW2R? The set of all vertices V, such that if you place the token at V at the beginning of the game, and P2 plays the first round of the game, then P2 wins the game. Uh, and these are all the red vertices, okay? Uh, so similarly, you can define uh, NL1B to be the set of all blue vertices V, such that if the token is placed at V at the beginning of the game and P1 plays the first round, then P1 loses. And likewise, you define these subsets. Now, moreover, we will define subsets based on the number of rounds for which the game lasts. Okay, so for any natural number N, uh, let us denote by NW1B superscript N, the subset of uh, that, that's, that subset of NW1B, which comprises precisely those vertices V, such that, again, if you place the token at V at the beginning of the game, and P1 plays the first round of the game, then P1 wins, of course, because this is a subset of NW1B. Moreover, the game will last for less than N rounds. Okay? And similarly, you can define the, the superscript N subsets for the other categories. Okay? So, uh, these will be important. Um, now, I define the probabilities involved. So, small nw1b superscript n is simply the probability that the root phi of the random tree, tree skip script t belongs to the subset capital nw1b superscript n conditioned on phi being blue. Okay, so this conditioning is very convenient. Okay, um, and we set this convention that when you, you take n to be equal to zero, then this probability is equal to zero, which makes sense because, of course, the game cannot last for less than zero rounds. So likewise, we define the other quantities here, uh, and I hope that makes sense. You can pause the video here for a little bit and take a look. Um, NW1B, without the superscript, denotes the probability that the root phi belongs to the subset capital NW1B, conditioned on phi being blue. Okay? Likewise, you define the other, sub the other probabilities without the superscript N. And it can be shown that uh, these uh, probability sequence of probabilities, these are increasing and they will increase to the right quantities. Like um, small nw1b superscript n, this is going to increase to n small, small nw1b uh, without the superscript as n goes to infinity. And similarly, the others. Okay, so this is a sort of a compactness result. Uh, so moving on. Uh, we need to define the probability generating functions corresponding to the offspring distributions. So that's what I have defined here. This is for the offspring distribution conditioned on the parent vertex being blue. And this is for the offspring distribution conditioned on the parent vertex being red. And then I also define these quantities where one of the coordinates, uh, one of the, I mean, one of the arguments in these functions is equal to one. Uh, this is really for convenience of notation. So, uh, you know, you, you, you can just ignore uh, defining these things. You can directly use these notations uh, in what follows. Okay. Now, basically, the idea is that you come up with recursions. Okay. And um, these recursions, you have to sort of sit down and work out. So I'm not going to be able to uh, uh, demonstrate that in, in for the sake of this talk. It's pretty short. Uh, so the idea is, for example, when you are looking at the set capital NW1B uh, superscript N. So first of all, P1 is playing the first round, right? And P1 has to win the game, which means that P1 is able to make the first move. And moreover, P1 is able to move the token from the vertex V that you're looking at to some child U of V, such that first of all, V and U have to be of the same color because P1 uh, has permissible edges only of type 1. And on top of that, if you are now going to just focus on U, if you place the token at U and play another game where P2 starts the game, where P2 plays the first round, then P2 loses. And this game lasts for less than N minus 1 rounds because the original game lasts for less than N rounds. So this is, you know, just an example of how you construct the recursive argument. And... Um, uh, using this sort of recursions, we get a, a number of recursions. Of course, uh, in the work in progress, I don't just deal with uh, Gal Galton Watson trees with two colors. So when you generalize the number of colors and you generalize the permissible edges and everything, uh, it sort of comes out to be, you know, uh, 
this sort of equations will come come up however it's going to be more complicated if it's going to be a vector valued equation okay so here you can see that this is a four step recursion that you get between nw1b superscript n plus 4 and nw1b superscript n okay and you don't need to get uh, recursions for these quantities nl2r uh, superscript n nw1r superscript n and nl2b superscript n because these are all connected with this this quantity on the other hand here you get a separate recursion for nw2b again this is a four step recursion uh, and it looks quite similar to this one obviously it's not exactly the same and then you get uh, the uh, the remaining three uh, probability sequences as sort of functions of uh, this uh, on this sequence and so you can see that if you now define uh, you know these functions h1x which is uh, inspired by this one and you, uh, this this function h2x which is inspired by this function um, then you can see that uh, basically n so just to read it out nw1b n plus 4 is going to be h1 of nw1b superscript n okay so you are getting uh, you are um, going to uh, get nw1b as the limit as n goes to infinity of uh, nw1b is superscript 4n you can just you know this this is four step recursions that's why i'm using 4n uh, and then that is equivalent to writing limit as n goes to infinity h1 to the power n here really means n step convolution of h1 applied to 0 0 y0 zero, because we set uh, as our convention we set nw1b superscript 0 to be equal to 0 and turns out you can show by showing that h1 is an increasing function that this is going to be nothing but the minimal fixed point of H1, okay? And similarly, you have uh, uh, a, a similar um, analysis for H2, okay? So NW2B will turn out to be the minimum fixed point of H2. So I'm going to stop here, and if you have any further questions, I can even go into discussions about the other results, which I couldn't include in this talk, about Misery Games and Escape Games uh, in the live discussion. Thank you so much.